This is going to be another question and answer video. And this question was, how was Paul a Hebrew and a Roman citizen at the same time? The question is about, was Paul bluffing in the book of Acts when he said he was really a Roman citizen? The quick answer is, I believe he is both a Jew and a Roman citizen by birth. So we know for certain that he is a Jew. In Philippians 3, 5 and 6, he says himself, Circumcised the eight, eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Then he said in Romans 9, 3 and 4, For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ my, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Then in 2 Corinthians eleven twenty two he says, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So we know for sure he is a Jew. And Paul was a genius when it came to the law and being a Pharisee. It says in Acts 22, 3, I am verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. Then he says in Galatians 1, 13 and 14, For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So Paul was a very zealous and smart man, very religious man. Many times someone who comes out of a religion and believes on Jesus Christ like Paul did will make a great Christian because their zealousness carries on into their Christian life. So Paul was so zealous after becoming a believer on Jesus Christ that he would have died and went to hell if it meant his kinsmen according to the flesh could get saved. So Paul had a serious burden for his kinsmen according to the flesh, the Jews. So is Paul, we've done established that Paul is a Jew, but is Paul both a Jew and a Roman citizen? I believe the answer is yes. Mostly because he just says so, and I don't believe he's lying. In the book of Acts 16.37, it says, But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily, nay verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. So Paul was a Jew, but Paul was a Roman citizen by birth, just like a Jew born in America would be an American by birth. You couldn't whip a Roman citizen without a fair trial. And he is a citizen of Tarsus. In Acts 21, 39, But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. The fact that Paul was a citizen of Tarsus, he was a Roman citizen by birth, he used this to his advantage. Acts twenty two twenty five through 28. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? So you see, Paul admits he's a Roman. He's a Jew, but he's a Roman citizen by birth, just like a Jew born in America and is, is an American by birth. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, and With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, I was, But I was freeborn. You see, the chief captain worked and bought his Roman citizenship, but Paul was freeborn. He was a Roman citizen because he was born there. In Acts twenty two twenty nine, it says, Then straightway they departed, and from him which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman, because he had bound him. And something interesting I realized while studying for this question, 
Sometimes you just realize things that you never really realized before, as Paul always seemed to have the name Paul, even when he went by Saul. You know, for the longest time, I've thought that uh, Paul uh, got his name after his conversion, that God gave him the name after his conversion. I just kind of assumed that, and that could be true still, but it didn't start calling, he didn't start going by Paul until after his conversion. We know that. But uh, in Acts 13, 9, it says, Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. It, it, he could have always had the name Paul. You know, we just assume that Jesus gave him the name Paul after his conversion. And I mean, I, I don't just completely throw that out. But it, it is possible that he was I always had the name Paul because it doesn't say that the Lord gave him the name Paul, you see. But Paul is, uh, something about this is Paul is a Latin name. Romans' original language was Latin. Romans are Gentiles. And the Bible starts calling Saul, Paul, after his conversion, because this is when he becomes the apostle to the Gentiles. In Romans eleven thirteen, it says, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So Paul, like Paulus, a Latin name, he starts going by Paul after he gets his ministry to the Gentiles, after he has uh, the conversion of Sergius Paulus, a, a, Gent a Gentile convert. Paul starts going by the name Paul. So, and that's uh, led somebody to have another theory that the Lord changed uh, Saul's name to Paul after his conversion. Then you have the theory that he was always been called Paul, but was going by Saul before his conversion, went by Paul after his conversion because of his ministry to the Gentiles. But the fact that Paul was a Roman citizen and a former Pharisee was used to his advantage throughout his ministry. So what should this, this should remind you that God can use your past even if your past was a wicked past. For example, Paul was smarter than his enemies because he used to be what they are. He used to be a Pharisee. And he knew what they knew. And then he also knew what he learned after his conversion. So he used the fact that he was a Pharisee before he was saved. He used that to his advantage. He used the fact that he was a Roman citizen to his advantage. He used his past. For example, a scientist who believed in evolution could get saved and then God can use his past. He will know all the arguments for evolution because he used to be one and would be dangerous for the Lord. Or take, for example, a comic book artist who got saved. He may have used his past drawing wicked things for comic books, but now he could use his talent for the Lord and all of his past experience could be used for the Lord. Similar to that graphic novel that you know the preacher Michael Pearl has, and how he got a converted comic book artist to draw the pictures in it. You know, God can use your past. God used Paul. Paul was a perfect candidate to be who he wanted him to be. He was a Roman citizen. He was um, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a very zealous Pharisee. God used Paul's past. Paul used his past to his advantage. So, this has just been a quick question and answer video. Was Paul both a Jew and a Roman citizen at the same time? I believe the answer is yes.